Hi guys, I'm Norbert Babos, CTO of Sarkit Hungary. Today I'm going to show you how to program the data inverter on the first use. Here on the AC side we have uh, powered on the breaker and the firefighter safety switch is also powered on. So it's time to power on the system. First we have to switch on the DC switch on the side of the inverter and then we have to power on the breaker inside the inverter. Once we have done this, the inverter will power on and we will be able to, to set it up. Uh, the first thing you should turn off, it's a, it's a beeping uh, sound that you will hear shortly because once you power on the inverter, uh, it will automatically uh, like want to, to have batteries on itself and for this reason, it's gonna start beeping because it doesn't have a battery at default. So to turn it off, you can go to upper right corner, the gear icon, basic settings, and the beep should be turned off like this. Uh, okay, so here on the main menu, you can see the PV side, the battery side, the load side, and the grid side, and also the diesel generator if it's applicable. Uh, so the first setting to do is uh, on the upper right corner here we have the settings and battery settings No battery because here on this side we don't have any batteries connected to the inverter so no battery and in the lower right corner a tick icon To save all the settings and also in the battery settings you guys can turn off the GAN signal the grid signal and the grid charge because we don't have any batteries and it's gonna be it's it's gonna make uh, the life easier for us because the the generator will just disappear from the menu. And uh, after the battery settings is done, uh, if you have uh, factory daya batteries, you can uh, use the lithium tick. And because there will be communication between the inverter and the batteries, uh, the inverter will know what type of, of battery does it have. Uh, connected. So if you have uh, daya batteries, just use lithium option. If you have uh, like, a, like a forklift uh, battery, you can tick on the use battery V, like the, the voltage. And if you tick the battery voltage on in the next few menus here and here, you can set the, the voltage limits to the batteries uh, to when to start charging them and when to stop discharging them from the inverter side. Okay, so after the battery settings in done, the second option for us is the basic settings. Here, uh, you only have to set the time, which is, uh, I think yeah, it's correct. So you can just click on it and use the up and down arrows to, to navigate. And after you set it up, just tick on the lower right corner. Then system work mode. Inside the system work mode, we have three different options. The selling first means all of the energy uh, from the modules from the roof will be fed back onto the power grid without any metering. The zero export to load means, uh, okay, first of all, here we have three different uh, connections. One goes to the grid side, it's the simplest way of connecting the inverter to the grid. It's the, the grid sign here. Uh, and here on the right, we have the gen and the load. The load is when you have uh, want to, to use the UPS function in the inverter. So when the grid, uh, there's a grid outage and you don't have any uh, electricity coming from the grid, the battery, uh, the inverter can supply energy to the load port with battery and with solar modules to the connected um, devices. So you can have a, a UPS uh, generator, let's say, and uh, on the gen side, the diesel generator can be connected into the ports, uh, but mostly we don't use the generator uh, port, only the load side. So zero export to load means the inverter will supply uh, the loads connected here onto the load port uh, and won't generate any more energy from the roof. So if you have five kilowatt connected to the load port, 
and it's consuming 5 kilowatt, the inverter will produce 5 kilowatt and won't produce any more. Uh, zero export to CT means the inverter will uh, monitor the CTs connected to the main breaker and uh, it won't let any electricity like uh, fed back to the grid. It's the principle of a zero export system. Uh, and next to these two functions, you have the solar cell uh, option, which means after, let's say for the zero export to CT, because here uh, we have zero export system, uh, zero export to CT with solar cell means uh, after supplying the loads and uh, the consumer, uh, all of the excess energy will fed back into the grid. So that's an option too. Now here we have zero export to safety and tick. Uh, the next one is the grid settings, the, the phase angle between the L1, L2 and L3. How is going to uh, determine the L1, L2 and L3? What are the phase angles between them? Uh, it's 0, 120 or 240 or 0, 240 and 120. For this uh, specific case here, we have 0, 240 and 120, uh, the, the phase, uh, yeah, the phases, and then just click. And in the advanced function, that's the next uh, setup. Basically, you, for asymmetric phase feeding, you can click this bottom left tick, uh, because if you don't use the asymmetric phase feeding, from basic settings, the inverter uh, is a symmetrical inverter, so it will uh, supply the, the grid with symmetric energy uh, feeding. So if you have 6 kilowatts coming from the roof uh, or from the solar panels, the inverter will generate 2, 2, 2 separate kilowatts into each of the phases. But with asymmetric phase feeding, yeah, the advantages is obvious. So you have to, to click the asymmetric phase feeding and then tick on it to, to make it work. Uh, the gem port is for settings when you have the generator uh, installed. If you don't have the generator, a diesel generator, you can leave everything as default in the menu. And the device info is where the inverter shows all the, the log files, the errors, the, the faults, the alarms. It will be displayed here. So these are the basic uh, settings you have to, to prepare when installing a new DIA inverter. And after you have set these uh, basic settings, it's time to, to use the, the phone application where you can uh, create a monitoring site for the end user and, uh, and the monitoring account also for the end user. So to do that, our application is called the Solarman Business uh, application. It's for installers only. So if you are uh, an installer, you have to use the Solarman Business application. But for end users, there is a different application which is called Solarman Smart. And we have to give the password to the inverter too. So you have to type two times the, the same password. Okay, so and we yeah, connect to the AP and then it will drop us to the phone uh, Wi-Fi settings. And here we have to, to use the password, which is shown here on the bottom again. So we connect to the dangles internal Wi-Fi. And if we switch back to the application, it will just uh, show if after verified is complete, it will be successfully connected. Yeah, successfully connected to the management system. And up from now on, approximately 10 to 15 minutes uh, after the inverter is visible on the network from the monitoring site. So after we've done the the Wi-Fi setup, we have to switch to the monitor tab on the application and in the upper right corner, 
there's a plus sign we click on it and then add new or create a plant here uh, we have to give the plant name the location the region the address uh, capacity from the solar panel size system types uh, system type there's a three different type it's uh, pv plus grid pv plus grid plus consumption and with batteries so if you have batteries on site uh, you can just simply select the last one because then it will show the consumption the production uh, the loads uh, the house loads consumption and the battery uh, infos all together okay um, the optional ones are not mandatory you can just simply skip them if you you don't want to set those settings up and then after uh, you you've completed the the whole page just click on the save icon on the top right corner and then it will take you to the next page where you can uh, add a data logger and uh, authorize end user to to access the plant so just click on add data logger on data logger we mean the the antenna or the qr code here you have to scan it and then it will add mm, to the site because basically you create the site without uh, any device on first and then after the site is created you can add uh, separate devices so here with the data logger you can add this inverter and then authorize end user you can create the end user here so after you created the site you have to know the end user's uh, name email password uh, you you have to set them up and after you created the user just fill in the name fill in his email address and create a password for him and then click on save then it will show uh, yeah, a summary of the end users infos which you can just tell them or make a screenshot of it and uh, they will be able to log in with those uh, informations and after you've done the end user creating and the adding the device too just simply click on the done icon on the upper right corner and then your plant is created uh, and remember to to download the solarman smart application for the end user and solarman business application for the installer for yourself uh, okay basically that's it for the day inverter first setup and the monitoring site creation uh, if you have any questions feel free to contact us we are happy to help and uh, Let's roll with Daya. Cheers.